all the basics. What's up, YouTube? 99 Freightliner MT65 for the 5924 valve Cummins. Doing an oil change. A few things to start with. 17 mil wrench, rubber mallet, a roll of paper towels, and a drip pan. I should never put a, an impact on these for a number of reasons. Uh, a, you can break these off, and if they break off, you're in a world of hurt because then you got to swap out the oil pan. Um, uh, also, uh, if you put an impact on there, uh, it'll come out too quickly, and oil will just come out all over you, and the impact, it creates a big, nasty mess. So put a 17 mil uh, wrench on there, give it a couple taps. So once you get the sucker loose, just spin it out. Kind of keep your hand out to the side until you get to uh, just the bottom of the threads. And pull it out just like that. Pay attention to the bottom of that drip plug. Uh, it's got a magnet. If you got uh, metal shavings and stuff in there, that means uh, <laughs> you got a problem in your engine and you should probably have that checked out. So your oil filter is usually behind the uh, alternator on these. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get to. You might be tempted to uh, remove that one. That's your uh, transmission filter. If you follow those lines, they go back to the transmission. Don't remove that. Like I said, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And uh, since it's right behind the alternator, uh, I find that the best option is to disconnect the battery. That way you don't you know, ground anything out. And uh, Grab yourself a set of oil filter pliers. You want to use your uh, oil filter pliers. Reach down in here between all these wires. Grab the oil filter at the top. If you grab it down here in this area, you're going to crush that filter and you have a chance of uh, puncturing it and that'll end up with the oil all over the ground. So remember, grab it up at the top where it's strongest and just uh, kind of spin it backwards. It's uh, better to do this on a cold engine as opposed to a hot one uh, because you can't really get these filters out from the bottom. There's uh, transmission lines and in the, in the cross member that goes between the frame rails underneath. Makes it really difficult. So when you're spinning this off and you get it close to the bottom of the threads, you're going to have to catch it and then take your thumb and shove it down into the hole in the top of the filter to be able to pull it out this way. If it falls, it falls. <laughs> Got it. So as you can see, I stuck my thumb down in there. If this engine was hot, this would be burning the shit out of your finger. Uh, just go ahead and empty that out and throw it away. Before you throw it away, make sure you get the number off of it and uh, cross it to whatever you can. And uh, you know, make sure that the, uh, the new oil filter um, is similar to this one. Also verify that this uh, rubber gasket at the top isn't stuck to the uh, oil filter housing um, because if it does your new oil filter won't go on <laughs> learned that the hard way years ago all right so when you get your new filter you want to take a little bit of that uh, oil it's on your glove or wherever just kind of uh, run it around that seal to kind of pre-lube it um, it depends on who you talk to some people will tell you to fill these with oil prior to installing them I don't <laughs> and that's just personal preference mainly because it's a pain in the ass so once you got your uh, your new seal here lubed up with a little bit of oil stick it back down in there line it up with your filter housing bring it up and try and spin it on if you can't do that it's okay to lay it down in there and uh, down below and then uh, get at it from the bottom and then you can just reach up in there and spin it into place. So like I said, if it's too difficult to get it from the top, you can set it down in there on the lines and in the frame, just wedge it against something, get up from underneath and just spin it on. And remember when it comes to oil filters, you don't want to use a wrench to put it back on. You want to just spin it as tight as you can get it but just by hand with one hand. So once you got your new oil filter on, don't forget to go back down below and screw your uh, drain plug back in. It's important to not over tighten it because with heat, metal expands and it'll kind of seal itself. It's also got a, a brass or copper washer 
on there that uh, that gets squeezed into place and will also help seal it and keep it from coming out. You want to just uh, just make it snug. You're not torquing it or anything, and you want obviously you want to be able to take it off next time without any problems. So once you get your new filter in and you get your drain plug put back in place, uh, it's time to fill it up with oil. Uh, most of these uh, five nines, whether it be um, the 12 valve or the 24 valve, uh, they have the same oil capacity, which is 11.2 quarts. Um, I just put 11 and a half for good measure. Um, it's 15W40, and make sure you're getting something that is for diesel engines. There is a difference in oils. So when it comes to filling your oil, uh, there's a number of different places uh, on these, depending on who manufactured the body. Uh, Grumman, um, like Grumman Olsen, Morgan Olsen, uh, a lot of times on the 24 valves, they put uh, um, an oil fill at, uh, at the very first uh, valve cover at the top of the engine at the front. Um, if you're, a, you know, uh, th this is a 99 and it's a Utilimaster, so they installed this uh, oil fill right here, which goes to the timing cover. It, it's all the same. It all goes to the same place. You know, you're just going to find them, you know, in different places around the, uh, the engine. So something else I like to add to uh, my engine oils on these higher mileage trucks is a uh, Lucas... Uh, heavy duty oil stabilizer. It uh, helps stop dry starts, which is the number one cause of damage to diesel engines, especially in cold weather and colder climates. Um, everything's, you know, shrunk down a little bit, and the rings in the engines, it's it's just really hard on them. Um, so just add a little bit of this. This stuff is kind of like uh, molasses, so you want to add it first. Um, uh, just follow the instructions. I uh, usually add about six ounces. So once you get your Lucas put in, uh, you're going to use the engine oil. If you have a tube, you're going to use that engine oil to kind of wash it down because it is very viscous, very molasses-like. Um, and then when you're done filling the engine with oil, start the truck, let it run for a couple seconds, shut it back off, then check your oil level. If you're in the etched mark on your uh, dipstick, then you're good to go. And as always, if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll, uh, I'll, maybe I can answer it for you. And uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.